Yo my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason and I'm from the Shelf Stories YouTube channel. And I'm here in the Dice Tower today to continue my series, which I'm calling Games for a Healthy Mind. I'm a psychotherapist for my day job and I use games and therapy uh, pretty often in order to kind of get a different angle on some aspect of a client's mental health. So today I'm going to feature Star Realms. Uh, this base box is for two players. It is a two player dueling uh, competitive deck building game. Uh, you can get another box if you want to play up to three and four players. Uh, so uh, this particular game I use, and I have used it for years at this point. I think I'm on uh, six or seven years of using this thing. Uh, and uh, my particular use for it is with teenagers. So I will explain all about how Star Realms fits very well into the psychology of teenagers uh, and talk a little bit about maybe tips beyond the game that could help you reach your teenager as well. So without further ado, let's go to the videotape and I'll check out Star Realms. Welcome to the beginning of a game of Star Realms. Um, so you are going to start like any good deck builder with your dinky little deck that barely does anything. Uh, <laughs> and you're going to be playing cards, you're going to be acquiring cards from this rotating market, and you're also going to try to defeat your opponent. So I have uh, the opponent's deck and their hit points laid out. Uh, okay, so on a basic turn, you are going to draw five cards, and these are, you know, the, the terrible cards. Um, <laughs> but you can do one of two things. You can use your money, so I have four money over here. I'm going to get rid of that, and then I'm going to acquire a card. So like, uh, this is a a nice attacky type card, cost me two. And then once I acquire one, I'm going to replace it in the market. Uh, and then you can keep on going. So, if there, you, so I have two coins left. I would acquire another card and then put that in the discard pile as well. Get one back. Uh, uh, to round out my turn, I would play an attack card and then I would just, you know, uh, just get rid of the hit point. <laughs> Uh, so that is really a basic turn of Star Realms. Uh, as you acquire cards, they're going to be uh, going into the discard, uh, which is pretty important because you're going to be shuffling up and get them again. One of the unique features of Star Realms is on future turns, let's say uh, I had returned all of that to the top of my deck, and then I draw these two together, which is why I bought them. So then you would attack for four. Uh, so this would be eight attack normal, uh, normally if they were separate. However... Uh, this means that they can color coordinate. So like once I put that together, I would get an extra two. So this would represent uh, 12 attack, which <laughs> uh, which actually in the early game is a lot. So it's like, pow, you know, just get rid of all these ones and uh, flip that over, um, that kind of thing. So then, uh, you know, uh, back and forth, back and forth. If you're acquiring different cards, it's four different factions. Uh, the Blob faction, I think this is, I, think, I know this is the Federation, these are the mechs, and uh, which faction is this? Star Empire or something. Yellow, <laughs> uh, blue, and red. Uh, different powers, different attacks. Uh, some of these cards, like these sideway cards, uh, eventually, so if I make room over here, this is going to be a standing kind of uh, bastion. Uh, they don't disappear unless, um, unless someone does damage to them, so this one has five hit points. Uh, once you do that, uh, it would go away. So it's kind of a little bit of a defense thing. Um, but for the most part, you are uh, just going to go back and forth until one person gets rid of all their opponent's hit points, and you are the winner. So that was Star Realms at the table. Um, like I said at the intro, I use this game for teenagers when I do a do treatment with teenagers in therapy. And I'm a, a little bit of a specialist in teenagers and young adults. I, I love them. <laughs> Uh, not a lot of people in my specialty um, love working with teenagers because they're such pains in the butts. Anybody who has a teenager knows how much uh, how much resistance you can get from them. And it seems like irrationally. Uh, but uh, knowing what I know about teenager psychology, it kind of makes sense. And I like using Star Realms because it the different aspects of it kind of fold into teenager psychology really well. So I'm going to emphasize uh, four aspects in this review today. Uh, I'm going to talk about privacy. Uh, I'm going to talk about cleverness. Um, I'll talk about aggression. And uh, the fourth one, I'll save that one as a little bit of surprise for last. Okay, so privacy. Every single parent of a teenager knows, or somebody who deals with teenagers knows, they value their privacy. Get out of my room. Get off my stuff. It's not yours. Get away from my phone. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> it's developmentally appropriate. Uh, the teenager is developing like really rapidly 
uh, in terms of, you know, hormone deployment, in terms of just neurological overall development, they're developing parts of their, uh, their critical thinking. Uh, that is, it's um, the, at its most um, formless. It's at its most, like, I call it wet cement. It's when the cement is wettest. And the teenager has this brute sense that, like, whatever happens at that age is going to be with them for the rest of their lives. Um, think about, you know, if you're an older person, uh, you know, beyond teenager years, uh, think about like the music you list, used to listen to when you were between the ages of nine and 15. You are going to remember that music for the rest of your life. You, you, they, it could be a song you won't have heard for 30 years. If it was a song you knew as a teenager, it's going to be in there. Uh, and you're just going to sing those lyrics <laughs> as if you just heard the song yesterday. Um, teenagers are kind of in the same boat but with everything, with like the way they see themselves, the way they are with their friends, and they unconsciously know it. So they're very guarded as a result. Like, what do you do with wet cement? You put tape around it. So teenagers are going to have that defensiveness and they're going to have, uh, they're going to do whatever they can to kind of put barriers, close doors behind what's going on. That is not a bug of teenagerhood. That is a feature. So how does that play in with board games, right? Uh, you may notice if you go to like a big con, there's not a lot of teenagers hanging out like big board gaming cons. Uh, mostly families, you know, small children with their adults. Uh, the teenagers are playing magic for the most part. They're playing card games. Why do card games in particular uh, draw the teenager a little bit more than like a regular board game? Privacy. One word, privacy. This is such an underrated part of card games in general. Like you can play a lot of card games. Like I play like Uno and... Um, I, which I've talked about famously <laughs> on the Dice Tower, talking about Uno, um, you know, gin rummy, you know, like regular, like kind of playing card games. Star Realms does the same thing. Like Star Realms uh, allows you allows the teenager, uh, and also Magic: The Gathering. Like I honestly, my preferred game to play is Magic because it's so popular and there's so much for it. But in terms of ease of entry, Star Realms is definitely the one. Private. I can kind of plot and plan all on my own. Uh, or all the teenager can, and all of a sudden, you know, when they're ready, when they're ready, they will come out and they will strike. A board game does not give you that. A board game is a large shared space, and that's wonderful for families, but a teenager finds that threatening, to be in a large space. I don't want to go to Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, I don't want to go visit Grandma. Uh. <laughs> that's my teenager voice. <laughs> But if, they, if you allow the teenager to like, you know what, uh, you can stay in your room or you can do, kind of do your own thing, they might be, uh, you can get them a little bit more that way if you offer them privacy. So that's number one. Um, number two is cleverness. So Star Realms is a very simple game, but it, it rewards a, just a, it gives that, tickles that cleverness uh, in a very specific way in terms of like, you know, the color combos. So you can just, you know, if you just buy cards that, you know, like you, I have five gold, I'm going to buy the five cost thing, you, you're probably going to lose. But if you build your deck in a color coordinated way, now you've kind of multiplied your your, your forces. So like I've, I showed you uh, two green cards that combo together. Let's say you build a green deck and then you find ways to kind of layer in some of the other cards. You know, a little bit of blue for money, a, a little bit of, uh, you know, of, um, uh, red. You need red for, for calling cards and everything. Um, so... But that color coordination is a very good jumping off point for someone who isn't familiar with games. So I'll lay it in front of a teenager. I tell them, color coordinate. They buy the color coordinated things. They see how much more powerful their cards are when they play them again and they combo them. And that, now all of a sudden it's like, oh, all right. I see this. That click happens. And, you know, and what, what do teenagers want to be? Like teenagers are, um, you know, one of the things that they're, they're, some of them are secretly afraid of is that they're kind of, you know, dumb. Uh, they, they compare themselves to their, uh, you know, baby people in the advanced classes or like the smarter person in their, their class. It, their whole life is academics. Their whole life is intellect, is uh, intellectual stimulation. So like they have all this opportunity to feel behind and dumb. And so giving them that little slice of now you're clever and you've put together a, a combo, you know, just from, you know, the color coordination and then you added in maybe a culling card to get to make that uh, color coordination pop off more often. That really comes together and it feels really satisfying uh, for that particular mindset. It wouldn't pay off, though, like a lot of games. Like, I mean, I think I think of the Dukes of Dice. That's the central question of, of any board game. Do you feel clever? 
what Star Realms and what competitive card games in general do is like they marry that cleverness with the aggression piece. <laughs> it goes back to that protection instinct, right? It goes back to like teenagers kind of want to like protect themselves from others um, in a lot of ways because they know they're developing and they're kind of in sensitive spots. Uh, they want to draw the yellow tape around people around themselves. Um, aggression is, you know, a, a basically an aggressive defense, you know, like it's a, it's a way of telling the world, okay, I am powerful. Get away from me. Uh, <laughs> in a fun way, in a sublimated way, in in that magic circle type way. So Star Realms has some really cool um, moments where you could just explode for Nova damage. And that is, that is an underrated thing that you can do. Um, so then, you know, like I showed you, like, you know, I, I just put two cards together and all of a sudden I've done 12 damage beyond like the one that I could do with my basic game. And you can get to a point where you're like, you know, uh, you're doing 20, 30, 40. <laughs> you, take your per you take the opponent from like full to zero if you have the, uh, the right cards come together. And that for a teenager is really, really fun. They'll, they'll really whoop it up. At least the teenagers that I work with. Oh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> And it's safe and fun and it's sublimated and it's a it, it goes it calls upon an instinct that they have that they want to be a little bit more aggressive. They want to separate themselves more from, you know, their parents and their everybody else make their own identity. And this is a fun way to express that um, to express that. So uh, so those were the three things that I use. Um, so the privacy aspect, um, the. Uh, cleverness aspect and the aggression aspect. And then the last thing that I do, just kind of as a closer to the session, um, what person in general doesn't want to get a gift? Here you go. You know? Uh, so then they, they had fun, and it's like, wow, that was really cool. I never really, you know, I never thought that a game could be this fun. I thought it was all Monopoly. This is cool. And I would say, you know what? Here you go. Keep it. It's like, you know, 10, 12 bucks. Uh, whatever the MSRP is, uh, I, what I'll sometimes do is I'll just buy like an eight pack and I'll just have them in my, in my office. If I see a, a client is coming in, a teenager, and they have fun with it, it's like, you know, here you go. Uh, and it's a nice little just kind of bonding moment um, because at the end of the day, even though teenagers want to, you know, divide and put the tape up and separate and all that kind of stuff, they're still humans too, and humans still need to connect somehow uh in different ways so like you know what a teenager wants is they want that connection they want to be understood but they want to be understood on their terms and in safe ways and there's nothing nothing safer than a pure gift that is just fun and you know it's a, it's a nice way to kind of close the session and seal the deal um and like i said before i've been doing it for a while now working with teenagers in particular uh and i've given away a bunch of these and i i, I don't regret it uh any time that i do so I hope that you got uh, some insights into the teenager mind. I hope that you got some insights into how you can look again uh, at Star Realms or any, you know, like card game, like a small competitive card game. Uh, anyone will do it. That This one's my favorite because of uh, it's so cheap and it's so accessible. Uh, low barrier of entry. I just I think Star Realms is fabulous. Uh, so final thoughts time. We're going to go eight out of ten on this one. Uh, seal of approval. High seal of approval. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I'm always going to have them. Uh, in my uh, therapy office. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is Jason reminding you uh, that I have a channel called Shelf Stories. Uh, it's right there. Uh, it is a YouTube channel where I, uh, you know, I have conversations and I also uh, do more with the mental health thing. I always have tips and tricks uh, to help gamers and people in general, um, you know, improve their mental health and uh, just be happier people. Uh, so, um, I'll remind you, if you could change your mind, you could change the world. So until next time, later everybody.